And we can turn to our superintendent's report. I'm not sure if Superintendent Dixon's with us or if Deputy is, okay. Hi. Superintendent Dixon, I believe, I is with us. Welcome. Great to see you. Hi. Yeah, I can see myself looking at me, looking at you in large form. So that's super awesome. <laughs> um, thank you for having a technology to let me participate and not share my contagion. Um, I, I too um, really appreciate the opportunity to um, celebrate the arts and our employee of the month and um, good things about education. So we'll start with our Beverly Taylor Swanson's Learning Program. And I think we have somebody there in the room, correct, Ryan? Good morning, everyone. I'm Rachel College. I am Fine Arts Coordinator here at the Utah State Board of Education. And you're in for a treat today. We have visual art that I'm gonna to describe to you and we also have some video of um, music education. And so um, I'm excited to, to share all this with you. So if we look through around about the room, um, to, my, to my left here, this lovely uh, rotting log ecosystem is from Bacchus Elementary, fifth grade. Uh, Beverly Taylor Sorensen an art educator is Alexandra Jameson. And students learn the science standards to develop and use a model to describe the movement of matter along plants, animals, decomposers in the environment, while simultaneously learning how to generate artistic work by conceptualizing, organizing, and completing artistic ideas and refining work through persistence, reflection, and evaluation. Um, if we look above our rotting log ecosystem. We have Utah wildflowers. Uh, the Beverly Taylor Sorens and art educator is Cheryl Larson. It's from Driggs Elementary, fourth grade. Bacchus and Driggs are both in Granite School District. The science that they've learned is to create a model of an internal structure of plants and explored how structures support an organism um, and its survival in the environment. And the art is they created positive and negative shape and identify and see the value changes. And then we have here from Enoch Elementary, Beverly Taylor Sorensen art educator Kristen Anderson, second grade. In science, they learn to obtain, evaluate, and communicate information about patterns of living things in different habitats. Students drew the wildflowers that grow at Cedar Break and discuss the individual needs of each flower. Those were our second graders. And if you look down just a bit, we have third graders. The science was engaged in argument from evidence that in a particular habitat, some organisms can survive well, some survive less well, and some cannot survive at all. And they drew the bristletone pine trees, which grow at cedar breaks, to discuss, and then discuss how the, their dense wood and slow growth allow them to survive for thousands of years in different environments. Then we have fifth grade. And they um, had questions to plan, they were able to plan and carry out investigations that provide evidence for the effects of weathering and the rate of erosion on the geosphere. The students drew the rock formations at Cedar Breaks and discussed how they were formed through deposition, weathering, and erosion. So then, I'll take you on this journey to the back wall, which are Utah landscapes from Driggs Elementary and Granite District, fifth grade. Our Beverly Taylor Sorensen and art educator is Cheryl Larson. The science as they described interactions between earth systems as a cause of Utah's landforms. And through the art, they created a variety of values and implied texture. Then over here, we have uh, blackout poetry. Amy Bohm is our Beverly Taylor Sorensen art educator at Fox Hollow Elementary. They um, utilize blackout poetry where students select certain words from text to circle and then drew at images to reflect their poetry. Next to those, we have our pizzas. Beverly Taylor Sorensen art educator Amy, uh, or excuse me, Alex Jamison at Bacchus Elementary in Granite District, third grade. The math is that they understood a unit fraction had a numerator of one and a non-zero denominator. They understood that a fraction, uh, one over B, as the quantity formed by one part when a whole is partitioned into the equal parts. And they created, uh, the gen they generated artistic work by conceptualizing, organizing, and completing their ideas. And they refined through persistence, reflection, and evaluation. 
they were able to, these third graders, utilize this dream pizza, and then they decided which of the pieces they were going to share in their uh, pizza party. So they shared with other students within that party um, to learn more about fractions. And then we have mittens and snow globes. So Britt Black, Beverly Taylor Sorensen Art Educator in uh, Granite District at Beehive Elementary. Our first graders, they read the book The Mitten by Jan Breddy, and they were able to design their mittens using line, shape, color, and pattern. They learned about matching and symmetry. In this particular book, the character loses one of the mittens, and so they were able to uh, utilize this story to understand how important it was that their mittens match. And then the um, fourth graders, did the Utah biome snow globes, and the science was that they have learned about flora and fauna found in habitats, and then they were able to create a landscape inside their snow globes, and from that, they then flicked white paint over it to simulate snow falling in a globe. And then we have a video for you um, from some of our other educators with music education. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I want to take a moment, if you could go back to that slide, thank you. Um, I, I want to take a moment to honor somebody who passed this last week from incidents of Alzheimer's. Carol Ann Goodson was an employee with us for about 16 years, and she really had an impact on the arts and education programs in our schools. I know when I was a principal back in the mid to late 90s, I was able to get grants in my schools to have artists in residence. And those are things that Carol Ann worked with community liaisons in our um, arts community 
to be able to uh, put art programs in schools. She was around when Beverly Taylor Swartzen first had her vision and was able to get some programs started in schools. And the things that you see, Rachel, and before Rachel, Kathy, and all of our great fine art specialists presenting, Carol Ann was really a foundation for that. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't honor her today and the 16 years that she spent really doing everything she could to get performing and visual arts into our schools, especially at the elementary level, and also shoring up programs in our secondary schools to encourage and enroll more students in our um, music and, and visual art programs. So um, thanks, thanks for the dedication to Caroline Goodson and our condolences to her family, both her education family and her personal family. I just wanted to honor her as somebody who really left a mark on public education in Utah. With that, we'll move on to another fabulous employee. Um, and I want to introduce to you Audra Yuri. I don't know if you've had the chance to meet Audra. She is just one of our favorite people. Audra is amazing. And she was nominated by Katie Hill. And I don't know if Audra's in the room or online. Patty, will you give me a thumbs up if she's in the room? Okay, online. Thank you. So um, let me just read this to you a bit. Audra has made Utah a safer place to be, and people are noticing. Um, Audra is our, um, she is our driver's education uh, lead. And she was, as I mentioned, she was um, nominated by Katie Dewey Hill, who is our quality instruction coordinator. So Audra works with driver's ed. And I don't, I've had the opportunity to supervise that position. I'm telling you, it is a rough position. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. And when she came to USBE, she really started engaging with the field with a full intention to ensure that our students have what they need to be wise, safe, and educated about the rules of the road and how to navigate their world. So the educators she works with in our districts and charters and driver's ed programs really have shared appreciation for the clarity that she has given and how they can best support their students with alignment to the law and common sense practices that keep our students safe. She is skillful, skillfully liaison with the Department of Public Safety and is working to ensure that all of the assessments for licensed drivers in Utah indicate that skills actually lead to better driving. She's been recognized nationally for her amazing work and asked to serve as a chairperson for the Association of National Stakeholders in Traffic Safety Education. I love this acronym, ANSI. Um, it's a committee that reviews national driver's education standards. Her leadership is extending beyond uh, keeping Utah safe to helping the rest of the country be safer for all of us. Audra's value has been seen across the field as she always supports our educators with hands-on professional guidance to ensure all the ducks are in a row. People frequently share how helpful Audra has been and how programs have uh, been improved under her leadership. I personally have received this feedback um, about Audra for all those who come in contact with her. So. Um, you know the drill as board members, just a reminder, she gets eight hours, eight hours of admin leave, which we really challenge and encourage her to take because she's one who doesn't use her leave. Uh, she gets a parking place that not even Chair Moss is allowed to park in, um, a special water bottle, a certificate suitable for framing, and I'm sure I'm missing something. But um, we love Audra and we're so happy to honor her this month. So let's give Audra a round of applause. And I don't know if she's online, so I'll stop my video in case she's online, Jerry, and you can bring her up. She can wave. I, I think she decided to go out base jumping to do something less dangerous than driver's ed. <laughs> yes. So thank, thank you, Audra. That's tough duty. Okay, so smart of her. Um, all right, then moving into... Um, my report. I don't think we have employees this month. New employees. We do. Michelle's here. We do. Okay, Michelle is here. Thank you. I didn't see it on the list. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Superintendent. Good morning. Michelle Watts with Human Resources. And I'm here to introduce the new hires at USBE from December 2022 to January 2023. Aspen Florence. Aspen is an educational specialist, prevention specialist of attendance, and she's from Pleasant View, Utah, and works in the Ogden School District, or previously worked in the Ogden School District, excuse me. 
Millie Mortensen. She's an office specialist from Bountiful, Utah, and previously worked in Salt Lake City School District as a reading interventionist. Monica McCarthy, IT Support Services. She's from Utah and previously worked in Willis Towers One Exchange as a Level 3 Analyst Internal Help Desk. Maria Holly, Education Specialist from Brazil, previously worked at Canyon School District as a Related Service Coordinator. Savannah Hunt, Education Specialist from Layton, Utah, previously worked at Utah After School Network. Susie Estrada is an education specialist from North Hollywood, California, previously worked at Dual Immersion Academy as an out of school time and early childhood education director. Megan Tippett, research consultant, data analyst from Layton, Utah, previously worked at BioFire as a data scientist. Nicole Clark, administrative secretary, she is from Logan, Utah, and previously worked at Symbol Arts as a sales executive. Ashley Hintze, Education Specialist from South Carolina and previously worked at Lakeview Academy as a Special Education Director and Educational Coordinator. Stephanie Smith, Research Consultant 2 from Salt Lake City, Utah, previously worked at Utah Valley University as an Intermediate Analyst in Institutional Research. And last but not least, Blake Ramsey, Brent's French Education Advisor from Atlanta, Georgia, and previously worked at the New York City Department of Education as a French Dual Language Program Coordinator. We welcome all our new employees. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. I just love introducing new employees. Thank you, Michelle. We are able to attract the best employees from all over the place, so thank you for joining us. Um, all right, I want to just share a couple of quick things and then get into the meat of my remarks. One, um, first, I was on, um, I was also at the Utah History Fair Day on the Hill talking with students. If you'll advance the slide, Ryan. And I, I just love talking to the students. I, I won't expand on this other than to say the depth and complexity with which these students approach their projects is my hope and goal for all of their learning in all subjects to really learn them with depth and complexity and find things that really interest them that they want to delve into. I so appreciate that they have these opportunities and, um, and those who lead it in the state and in, in, in our, in our um, agency, thank you. Next slide. Um, I was able to present to the Secondary Principals Association a quick trip down and back in one day to St. George. And I was greeted by the band and cheerleaders from my alma mater, Dixie High School which was great fun, but I just loved the feeling of walking in amongst all of these many secondary assistant and um, junior high, middle school, assistant principals, high school principals who were there together to really lean in and learn on issues of leadership about how they can do their best work. And to be greeted by students was, was great. I tried to teach them an old cheer from Dixie High that was my favorite. They just weren't really um, picking up on it with enthusiasm, but they were good sports. I want to share with you some remarks that I shared with the um, with principals. And I've been watching a series, it's a documentary on Netflix called Basketball or Nothing. I learned some great life lessons in this documentary that I shared with the principals and want to share with you. The first is, uh, well, I just want to give you a little bit of background. The, the documentary is based on a group of students in Chintley, Chintley, Arizona, on a Navajo reservation. And Chintley is a community on the reservation that loves basketball. All the kids have these basketball standards on their property. They're always out shooting hoops on the dirt, and they tend to call it res ball. And what the boys mean by res ball is that when they get on the court, they just primarily kind of run and shoot. They don't really have a format that they use, but they just um, they just get out and, and have fun shooting the ball, and they're pretty good at shooting the ball. Well, there, uh, next slide, Ryan, thank you. Along came a school counselor who was also the athletic director that really discovered some talent in a couple of the boys that felt like they had a chance to go to the championship. And the community members of Chintley 
And they live for the possibility of going to the state championship. They were in the finals at one time and they've remembered that as a community and it drew them together. So it's their goal to get back and seeing the potential in a couple of these young men, the athletic director felt like he really needed to go out and recruit, recruit a coach that could help these young men. So he found Coach Mendoza. Coach Mendoza had coached a couple of championship teams and um, Coach Mendoza also coached somehow, I think it was with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, did some community thing with him. And Coach Mendoza, after watching the boys, decided that he really needed to help them focus on the basics, that they weren't really playing offense with any assembly and they were not really playing defense at all. So he taught them that you have to do both to win. You have to play offense and defense. And I think this is true in our education system. You know, sometimes we feel like we're on defense, especially during the legislative session at times, and yet, and yet we're on offense as well, always trying to promote quality, the things that we want to see move forward. So, so for us as a board and as a community of educators, I think we have to think, constantly think about what's working and what's not working. What do we need to defend and what do we need to do differently? So always playing offense and defense. Um, the next lesson that Mendoza taught his players was to really care about each other, both as individuals and as a team. He found that even though these boys were going to school together, they really didn't know each other. And sometimes their games are, you know, 140 miles or more away and they spend a lot of time on buses. Sometimes they're just in a neighboring community. So there's a scene in which he has them sit on the bus. They're going to a um, game that's close by and he has them stand up and share one thing about themselves that the others may not know and then a goal that they have. And the things that they shared were, were pretty dramatic to very mundane, you know, things like my father died when I was five or I really don't have any goals. You know, I'm just trying to get by. But through this experience of just learning a little, about, a little bit about each other, they were able to grow closer and care about each other as individuals while working together as a team. And I think there's such a lesson there for us as adults in the system and thinking about our students. When we know more about our students and care more about our students, we can focus on them holistically as a class, as a group, um, and also care for the one. And I think our very best leaders in this system are those who get it. They care for the one while working towards the whole. So uh, again, just thinking about our purpose as we work together as individuals and as a team. The next lesson that Coach Mendoza taught these boys was to listen, observe, and practice. And I loved the boy Chance, who is, um, I'm not sure where he's on your screen. Let's see, it would be fourth from, from the right. That is Chance. Excuse me. And Chance, uh, when he was being interviewed, he said, you know, Coach Mendoza taught us a lot of lessons. And we would listen to him and realize that he was smart and knew what he was talking about. But then we would keep doing the same thing. So after two losses, these boys learned that they needed to um, start observing what good teams were doing and then practice the things that they were being taught. And too often, whether it's adult learners in our system or students, sometimes we don't take time to observe and listen and practice the things that we know are working. Um, so I, what a powerful lesson. These boys, when they started doing that simple thing of listening, observing and practicing, they won every game in the season after that point as Chance pointed out. So it sounds like simple advice, but it's, it seemed to work for Chitley and it should work for us. And then last but not least, um, Coach Mendoza set high standards for these boys and he was really consistent about it. So he would say, here's the standard. He would coach them on it. He would provide consistent feedback and he never wavered from that standard of excellence. And I'll leave you to watch the series if you so desire and find out what happens. But these boys really found success, not just on the basketball court, but they ended up getting um, academic scholarships because he also taught them how important it was to be well-rounded and to focus on goals that were both academic and athletic in nature. And it really was life-changing for many of these families. So how does this relate to the basics of um, school improvement and leadership? And these are the things that we talk about often. Next slide, Ryan. 
So again, just to review the lessons of Coach Mendoza, um, if you want to click through these, Ryan, you can put them all up. Uh, first, again, just to play offense and defense, <clears throat> we need to establish a vision and be clear about where we're going. I think that's true for you all as a board. It's true for our school leaders. But what is our vision of public education and, and how do we know where we're going? Having a very clear strategic plan has been very helpful over the last five years. Everybody in the system knows where this board is headed. So as you have those thoughts and conversations moving forward, I think establishing that clear vision uh, with a set of goals so that people know where we're going will continue to be very important for the, for the um, education community. Also, one thing that we're doubling down on that I think is so important that we don't talk about enough, and that is making sure that our students have access to high quality instructional materials and high quality instructional practices in every classroom every day. I challenged our secondary administrators to make sure that this is something that they're focusing on. They have a lot of complex issues going on in their schools, but really focusing on um, the high quality instructional practices and materials is something that can go a long way to ensuring that our students have opportunities and possibilities for their future. <laughs> Excuse me. Also setting and modeling clear expectations for students and staff. You know, it's one thing to say what you expect. It's another to show it by not just word, but by deed as well. So really modeling those expectations are important. Effective leaders really care about individuals in their system, and they work as a, a team to achieve success for all students. And I think, uh, or not I think, I know, as I have visited schools all across the state, I see great leadership in action. I see our educators really caring for each other and caring for their students and really caring about their success. Another thing that I think we can always get better at is making sure we create a culture of feedback with opportunities for listening and practicing and learning together. We have raised ourselves in a culture of isolationism. We have single classrooms where we go in and shut our doors, and we don't always have opportunities to collaborate with each other. You've heard time and time again how your investment and your support for additional time for teachers has made all the difference for them. Time to have quality conversations and learn from each other and with each other has been critical to the success of our, of our students through the success of the adults who serve them. So these great lessons that I learned from Coach Mendoza by watching Basketball or Nothing was such a wonderful reminder that sometimes we get so caught up in the complexity of our system, especially during this time of year when a lot of policy streams are coming at us that we just need to really think back to the basics of what we know about great leadership and focus on those very basics. Um, and with that, I leave you the lessons of Coach Mendoza. Thank you, thanks for the time. Thank you very much, Superintendent Dixon. <clears throat> Let's see, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. I don't know if folks are Interested in a five-minute break, or if we want to plow ahead, shakes or nods? Any? I see some keep goings. Okay, we'll try to keep ahead. Let's uh, go to our general. Cons All right. Exactly. Good. Good point. We'll see if we can keep that twenty minutes that uh, we've we've picked up here.